there's fresh hope for the future of the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists and tourism operators have been working together to grow new coral and repair the damage from mass bleaching. They've salvaged and replanted 70,000 broken fragments of coral in four years, with an average survival rate of 85%. They say the program has been an unprecedented success. For more joining us live is Professor David Sager, the coral scientist and team leader of the Future Reefs program. David, appreciate your time. It sounds like pretty painstaking work. When the new coral grows, tell us, is it the same quality as, as coral as it would be growing naturally? That's right. As soon as we replant the coral onto the reef, uh, it, you know, what you have is you're fast tracking a natural process. So Normally, corals would reproduce in the wild, it would settle on the reef and it would regrow. So we're just sort of taking out some of the risk where normally there's a lot of natural mortality events of the coral. We're, we're really overcoming some of those bottlenecks. So the coral will regrow in the same way as it would do normally, but a lot faster. So we're boosting natural recovery rates. That's the real essence of the program. And how long does it take that coral to grow? Well, on the, this is a really interesting point. So on the reef, it typically takes about three to four years to grow from, say, a tiny fragment the size of your finger to a sort of dinner plate sized colony, depending on the species. So it, it's about uh, 50 centimetres, say, over several years. And that's important for us because once it reaches this dinner plate size, that's when they start to reproduce all by themselves. And that, again, is the ultimate goal. You know, we want to not just replant coral for the sake of replanting coral. The whole goal is fast tracking this recovery and getting it to the point where all of that coral is starting to reproduce naturally by itself. Um, we're essentially making ourselves redundant over time by doing that. But that's the whole goal with the tourism industry to uh, to make sure that that reef is healthy again, but also the healthy areas also um, stay healthy. So you're saying that you don't think we've gone beyond the point where the reef would be able to recover naturally without needing the sort of invention you're describing? That's a, that's a really great question. So all reefs recover naturally, of course, but the pressures we're placing on the reef at the moment means that the, the rate of natural recovery is slowed so far it's in a rate of decline. So these sorts of interventions are a means to boost the natural rate of recovery. Of course, the ultimate solution is we have to solve climate change. We have to solve it quickly. But what the operators are doing by replanting this coral and boosting the recovery rates beyond the natural, um, the, the natural extent, is that the, the reef has a chance to um, be present whilst we're solving climate change. That's, of course, really critical because if we do nothing, the reef is just simply going to keep declining. Um, so we have this twofold game. We have the short-term solutions where we have interventions. We have scaled process with the operators undertaking all of this planting activity. And that ensures we have the reef in place whilst we focus on the real threat, which is climate change. How would you characterise the health of the Great Barrier Reef at this point? Well, the health of the Great Barrier Reef is really in trouble. I think uh, we, we know that from all of the scientific evidence that's been collected. What we should say, though, is it's incredibly patchy. When we think about the status of the Great Barrier Reef and we hear reports such as 50% of the reef has been lost over the past few years through repeat events under climate change, it's very patchy how it manifests. So typically any one reef of the 3,000 reefs um, is sort of half in a state of disrepair, but half looking spectacular. So again, this is where this process is really important because what the operators are able to do is, is take all of the really good areas and use that to start rehabilitating the poorer areas, whilst also focus on maintaining the health of the really good areas. So it's a really sort of clever process of working with nature and working what is there. By doing that as well, what they're also working with is, of course, all of the populations that have managed to survive the past few years of impact events such as coral bleaching. So whilst not everything we plant we know is going to be resilience, the plan is that much of the coral that's put back in place has some mode of diversity to ensure that there's resilience against future events. And there's all sorts of methods that we're using to, again, screen for corals that have more heat tolerance than others that might be suited in different environments, for example, to maximise the success of the operation. So one of the statistics that you heard, we have an 85% survival rate, and that's been achieved through really learning over 70,000 planted corals of, if, if you like, species environment compatibility. When we plant coral, what is the best species to plant where? And, and that's taken actually quite a bit of time to learn. This sort of process, although 
coral planting has been undertaken globally probably for the past 10 or 20 years. It's never been done before at this scale and certainly never before at this rate. So there's been a lot of learning and that learning has been on the front line with the operators themselves with all that new knowledge. Us as scientists, we come in and we help validate that because of course planting 70,000 coral sounds really amazing and a survivorship rate of 85% is actually unprecedented. Where we come is to really make sure those numbers are rigorous and really make sure that um, when we think about that 85% number is, is which reefs does it really apply to and can we do better elsewhere? David, it's an absolutely fascinating project. Sounds like you're kicking some real goals there. We all wish you the best of luck as it continues. Thank you.